Demi Lovato leaves rehab and is spotted with someone new. Ariana Grande name drops her exes and Pete responds. And Chloe opens up about Tristan's cheating in a series of tweets. All that and so much more on today's rundown. Hey you guys, welcome back to the Daily Hollywood Rundown. Happy Monday. We have so much news for you because a lot happened over the weekend. Uh, like Rihanna just clapped back after finding out her song was being used at a Trump rally. Yeah, but we'll talk about that later on in the show. But first, Demi Lovato is officially out of rehab and she's being spotted with someone new. After a 90 day stint in rehab, reports have now surfaced that Demi is officially back in LA. TMZ said she has taken this rehab stint very seriously and her sobriety is everything. According to TMZ, Demi spent the weekend at a spa in Beverly Hills, and some Twitter users even claim to have seen her over the weekend at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. On Saturday night, Demi was spotted at Matsuhisa Restaurant with clothing designer Henry Levi, who she appeared to be smiling, laughing, and holding hands with throughout their meal. At this point, it's obviously way too early to tell whether or not Demi and Henry are more than just friends, but fans are just happy she's in LA smiling and looking healthy. I mean, hey, yeah, I like that she's, you know, out of rehab. It looks like she's doing really well. I don't want all these like rumors spreading like, oh my gosh, what if they're a couple? She just needs to focus on herself and it looks like she has someone, you know, that's there with her as a friend, whatever he is. I'm just glad she's happy. I know, I'm, okay, I'm a little confused though. Is she out of, out of rehab? Like, is she done? Because there were reports saying she was going to be in rehab till mm -hmm. the end of the year. Yeah. So I wonder if this really is that she's out out or if she's, I don't know, like maybe they like have- a, Like a weekend kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, maybe it's like switching to less hours there. She doesn't, doesn't have to be there 24 seven. Yeah. Uh, also not to speculate too much, but I will say I saw those photos and it looks like a little, little bit of a romance. You guys, Ariana Grande dropped the song we didn't know we needed over the weekend called Thank You Next, and in it, she name drops her exes. Okay, so on Saturday, Ariana Grande dropped a track where she looks back at her former relationships in her therapeutic new song. Ari recaps what she learned from each of them. Even almost got married, and for Pete, I'm so thankful. Wish I could say thank you to Malcolm. In the second verse, she switches the narrative to her new relationship with herself. I know they say I'm a one too fast, but this one gon' last. Cause her name is Ari, and I'm so good with that. In the track, Ariana also reveals her firm stance on marriage, singing, quote, One day I'll walk down the aisle, only wanna do it once, real bad, gonna make that last. She also told fans on Twitter that Thank You Next is the title of her new album that she's working on. She also revealed to fans that she played Ricky and Sean the song before its release. But the timing of the song was no accident, you guys. It came just an hour before SNL aired live on TV, so all eyes were on Pete's upcoming skit. And the last thing I will say is, I know some of you are curious about the breakup, but the truth is, it's nobody's business, and sometimes things just don't work out, and that's okay. While many people were probably expecting him to joke about what happened, he actually took the high road and spoke very highly of Ari. She's a wonderful, strong person, and I genuinely wish her all the happiness in the world. Pete did add, quote, I'm still a great song, though, referencing the sweetener song Pete Davidson, which Ariana wrote specifically for him while they were together. So Pete was apparently planning on doing a whole skit about the breakup during Saturday's episode, but after he joked about it in a promo and Ariana got upset, he then reportedly talked to an SNL executive and got it cut from the show. I love this song so much. I remember, okay, I was at a show when it dropped, and so I couldn't listen to it, so I looked up the lyrics, and immediately thought they were fake because I saw her talk about Sean. I saw mm. her mention Ricky, Mac, Pete, and I was shook. And I was like, there's no way these lyrics are real, but they are. Oh my, I can't believe. So when did you first hear it then? Oh, when that you night. Got, when you got it, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I played it and immediately I was like, this is this is a jam. Like, it's very catchy, you and know? I love that it's a song all about mm -hmm. self-love because that is yeah. so important for those that are getting all heated about it being like a revenge track or it being shade towards her exes. No. Ariana has clapped back at those rumors saying that's not what it is. And if you listen to the song, that is not what it is mm -hmm. at all. It's all about you needing to love yourself before you love anyone else. And also maybe you've had negative experiences with an ex, but 
take what you've learned from it, turn it into mm. a positive, which she did with this banger. I love it. All right, you guys, since we're already talking about Ariana Grande, we have something else to address. Her ponytail. It's not as easily achieved as the, although you make it seem like it is. Hey, Camila Cabello <laughs> tried it out herself and uh, she tweeted at Ari. On Sunday, Camila and Ariana shared a little Twitter banner about the special kind of torment that comes along with pulling hair back that tightly. Camila kicked it off by tweeting, I just did a high ponytail for the first time and it is literally pulling on my brain. It's so painful. How do you do it, Ariana Grande? Ari responded with, well, you actually have hair, so that probably makes it a little bit more painful. Nah, JK, I'm in constant pain always and don't care at all. Then Camila tweeted, I had to take it off, hashtag thank you next, obviously referring to Ari's latest song. Ari then joked, aw, so happy for you, you still have feelings, must be nice, crying and smiling. Camila and Ari ended their Twitter combo with Camila asking, also, will you be my wife again, Ariana? And Ari responded with, I never thought you'd ask, come home, baby girl. Yes, I think this is a question that most of us wonder, you know, when people wear really high ponytails. Does it really hurt? I can chime in. Okay. So this is my real hair, and I don't have it on that tight, so it's fine. But I did the fake hair thing. I still will do the fake hair thing from time to time. But that is painful. And Ariana Grande's ponytail huh. is so thick, and I know she probably has a million because she's Ariana Grande and yeah. she changes up her hair all the time. But that is heavy. And when you get it like real tight on your scalp, Ow. it hurts. I don't know how she does it all the time because she doesn't just do it for events or, you know, certain award shows or whatever. She, I mean, if you ever see her getting spotted out by like the paparazzi, mm -hmm. she is rocking some sort of fake hair high up on her head, tight AF, and I don't know how the girl does it. I feel Camila, because it it's I, hard. I, I can't even imagine. Rihanna does not want her music getting played at Trump rallies. Philip Rucker, AKA the White House Bureau Chief for Washington Post, tweeted during a Trump rally on Sunday, quote, Trump's rallies are unlike anything else in politics. Currently, Rihanna's Don't Stop the Music is blaring in Chattanooga as aides toss free Trump t-shirts into the crowd like a ball game. Everyone's loving it. The tweet made it to Rihanna in an hour and a half, and she responded with, quote, not for much longer. Me nor my people would ever be at or around one of those tragic rallies. So thanks for the heads up, Philip. This Twitter exchange came just hours after Rihanna endorsed Andrew Gillum for Florida governor by posting on Instagram. Rihanna is just one more name added to the list of artists who have requested their music not to be played at any of Trump's events. Last week, Pharrell Williams had his attorney send a cease and desist letter to stop playing his song Happy after it was played at a rally hours after the horrific shooting at a Pittsburgh synagogue. The Rolling Stones, Adele, Guns N' Roses, and Queen have also made similar requests for their music. Honestly, I don't blame any of them, mm -hmm. and I think it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's funny how she found out that it was, you know, obviously a Trump supporter, that he was just excited. Little did he know that Rihanna would just not be happy about it, so be and careful. Word travels fast, man. That was an yeah. hour and a half later. She's like, that's not gonna happen no, anymore. No. I mean, I can't imagine being being a musician, being an artist, and hearing a song played at something, you know, you just don't believe in. I would be furious, too. I, I totally know. understand. So I love this. I <laughs> hope this kind of keeps happening because it's so entertaining <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah. Chloe recently opened up on Twitter about everything that happened behind the scenes when everyone found out about Tristan's cheating scandal. Although that devastating time is one that Chloe would much rather not relive, she kinda had to when E aired the bad and the ugly on Sunday's episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Hours before it all went down, Chloe had a few things to say via Twitter. Coco got emotionally candid with her statement and tweeted, Tonight's episode is an uncomfortable and super emotional one for me, but when we signed up for the show over a decade ago, we signed up for a reality show, which meant showing you guys inside our lives, the good, the bad, the ugly. She continued by saying that having to relive those moments again is incredibly difficult, but she hopes that with every curveball life throws at us, that we learn from our journeys. She shared how true is her ultimate gift and that she's changed her life in every way she imagined. She continued by saying, you are never alone in your pain and that everything is temporary, and to be graceful for experiences that build character and make you who you are. Fans from all over had Chloe's back with one tweeting, 
I wouldn't be mad if you skipped tonight's Keeping Up With The Kardashians chat because it'd be very understandable. Whatever you decide, we support and love you forever and always. Once the emotional episode aired, Chloe's biggest supporters could not help but be mad at Tristan all over again. One fan did not hold back when they called out Tristan for his behavior, tweeting, Tristan Thompson is a real definition of a piece of Not only did you disrespect Chloe, you also disrespected your child. It takes so much bravery to one, open that part up of your life that happened um, and to just have everyone criticize it. I mean, we all lived it, but we didn't see what was going on behind closed doors in a way. And I think it's it's just very mature because then Chloe continued talking about how, you know, the birthing experience and everything was just so beautiful, but it was all about true. Like it no longer was about just them two being together and her, you know, not liking obviously that Tristan was cheating on her just moments before she gave birth. So I think it just speaks to how, how mature and how poised these girls are, these Kardashians really. Yeah, I really feel for Chloe. I mean, that happened a while ago now, months back, but I feel like I relived it that day we found the story and it was shocking mm -hmm. to everyone in the office when we read that. Um, I feel for her, I feel for her family. I couldn't imagine having to be, you know, her sister or her friend and st like look at him because you, uh. you honestly in that moment have to only think about Chloe and True, but to like look at that man after what he did and not punch him in the face is like very hard and they all did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, before we go, I need to know, do you think any of Ariana Grande's exes will respond to the song directly? I know Pete kind of did on SNL, but like, will yeah. we hear from Big Sean oh. or Ricky? Leave us your thoughts down below. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to know, what do you think of this whole Rihanna not wanting to have her song played at a rally? Who else would you I guess, think that they would not like to have the song play. What are your thoughts? Just let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, and in the <laughs> meantime, you guys, you can follow me at Renee Ariel on Instagram. And you guys can follow me on all social media at Amy Cassandra MTZ. And we will be back here tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. But before you go, make sure you click right over there to find out a little bit more about Harry Styles' second album. You're gonna wanna know, but uh, also click this button right here because we deliver the best news Five, six days a week and like <laughs> oh, don't yeah. you want to watch all the videos all of them